in the previous video we went over the mission requirements and also we went over the general sizing spreadsheet that we'll be using to design our mission specific aircraft. If you haven't watched that, feel free to go watch part one of this three part series. Now that we are ready to go, we're going to review our mission requirements and then start designing the aircraft. So the first one is it has to be small enough to pack into something that someone can carry on their back and here are some max dimensions. It has to be hand launchable which is related to the a low stall speed. It has to have a, to a total range of over 50 kilometers. Payload weight of 150 grams. We have a volume constraint that we'll get to in the next video and then a power requirement of 10 watts and then durable enough to do belly landing and that is again related to the stall speed. So with these mission requirements in mind, let's go to the general sizing spreadsheet. So we'll go ahead and put in 0.15 kilograms for our weight and 10 watts for the payload power requirement. Now from here, we're going to come down and look at our suggested payload fractions. Just to get us started, the mass fraction is really the more critical thing and we'll use that as we finish up the design but for now we'll use the payload fraction to get us started. The payload fraction is listed right here. We can see that it's a little high. The goal with this aircraft is that it will be built out of foam with carbon fiber rods to give it the structure. So if we look at the foam we want the payload fraction to be less than 8. So let's go ahead and increase this to maybe 1.5. We look here still not high enough maybe 1.7. We'll start there. So payload fraction of 1.7 and uh, we can continue. The zero alpha drag coefficient, we'll leave that there. We will get a better estimate of that once we have built this aircraft in mock-up. Oswald's efficiency, we'll again, we'll leave that. Now let's come up here and build the main wing. Let's start with the wing loading. Now down here we have this table that shows some suggested wing loading. For our aircraft, we want some high endurance and range and so it's going to from that uh, standpoint, we're going to want a, a lower wing loading. But it also needs to be small enough to fit into somebody's backpack. And so that's going to push the wing loading up a little bit, um, maybe even ab up above the trainer level into the sports section. So we'll see how this works out. But let's start here in the middle, maybe with a 0.46 grams per square centimeter. We want a higher aspect ratio. So I'll, I'll start with 9. But as that aspect ratio increases, the wingspan increases, and our ability to pack it on somebody's back um, decreases. So we'll have to watch our, our wingspan. We'll put a taper ratio of maybe 0.8, and we can play with that later. You can see here that it automatically fills the parameters in. And down here, we're going to use the max lift coefficient of 1.4, and that's related to a Clark Y airfoil, which is the one we're going to use. In the mock-up mock, mock -up program, when we go to actually design the airplane, we'll put in the information for the Clark Y airfoil. So we have, for starters, the main wing is mostly designed. You can see that our range is not doing great yet, and that's because of our battery capacity. So we're going to come back down here on the left and start adjusting the propulsion parameters. So First, I'm going to notice that we have right now a 1S battery pack, and we do not want that. We want a higher voltage and um, more capacity. So I'm going to maybe start with a 3S battery pack. I feel for this size aircraft, a 3S should do fine. You can see that our range increased just by uh, changing that, and we obviously need more capacity, so I'll maybe 3,000. Again, we're trying to hit a range of 50 kilometers, so maybe 5,000, almost. Let's go here to 6,000. Okay, so we're getting close, but not there yet, but there are a number of other things to address, so we'll, we'll come back to this. Um, as I come down here, as noted in the previous video, we uh, are using 90% of our total capacity. If we went beyond that, we would uh, be risking damaging the batteries and a 40% overall efficiency. Again, a lot wrapped up into that value that we can explore in a different video. Now, on the right here, we're going to notice that the cruise airspeed is a little bit low. So let's put this 
airspeed maybe up to 12. All right, so at 12, we already hit our range goal. Let's go double check. That's right, 50 kilometers. All right, so things are looking pretty good. You'll notice we're going to come over here, look at our wingspan. Now, this is the semi span. It's actually a little bit too long. The uh, the max re or the max dimension was 90 centimeters. So to decrease that, what we're going to do is increase our wing loading, maybe to 0 0.5. You'll notice that this number now decreased, so that we are within the value that we need. And we are still meeting our range goal. Now, the next thing to consider here is the difference or the, the margin between our stall speed and our cruise speed. It's not safe to be flying so close to a cruise speed or to the stall speed. Right now, our cruise is at 12 meters per second and our stall is right at 9, and that's just not comfortable. So, we're going to increase our cruise speed so that we're comfortable, and we'll maybe put it up about 15 meters a second. We took a little bit of a penalty in our range, but now we're flying in a more comfortable, um, with a more comfortable margin between our stall and, and our cruise speed. So now that we've done all that, let's look back at our mass fraction. Now this is the one that we're going to focus on now. We use the payload to get us started, but we're going to focus on the mass fraction um, so that we get it where, where we want it. It's at 27%, and you'll notice down here that a mass fraction for the foam aircraft could be as high as 35. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to decrease the weight of the aircraft to get that up around 35. Well, there we go. So we decrease the weight of the aircraft. You'll notice that this is up around 35 now, and our range estimate with that decrease in weight shot up. We're, we're well exceeding our goal. So now that we're well exceeding our goal, we can actually probably decrease the size of the battery and still reach our goal, and we do. So we're reaching our goal for range now, and our wingspan is definitely reaching our goal in wingspan. The wing is not exceeding that uh, 90 centimeters. Our cruise speed is at 15 meters a second. We're stalling at 9. I'd actually like to go a little faster than that. Again, we want to keep that stall margin large. Okay, so again, we took a little hit, but now we're flying at a more comfortable airspeed. And it looks to me like, like we've done an okay job here. Let's review our requirements. Dimensionally, we need to break down into these dimensions. And so the wingspan is less than 90 centimeters, uh, the semi-span, that is. And that means that we're going to meet, meet that. Hand launchable, whoopsies, um, we'll come back to that. We, we're exceeding our range, our payload weight is in there, we're definitely, uh, the power requirements are in there. So let's go look at our stall speed. Our stall speed is about, or is 9.16 meters per second. That is definitely an airspeed that with the assistance of a propeller, somebody can toss it up in the air, especially at only being one point eight kilograms, somebody can toss that up in the air and uh, get it flying. So hand launchable is a check and it's also soft enough that we should be able to land on our belly and not and not damage anything. So it looks to me like we've reached our all of our requirements. I guess the last thing that remains to do is to go find an actual battery for the aircraft. So I'm going to come open up a new tab and I'm going to search Oopsies, LiPo 3S, 5,000 milliamp hour battery. All right, so here we have a battery pack. And the important thing to notice right now is the weight. It's 412 grams. So let's go back to our spreadsheet and look at the weight of the battery. Our estimated weight of the battery based on the power density is 411 grams, which is pretty close. If we needed to change that, we could increase or decrease the energy density to change the weight of the battery. So we'll put it back where it was, 135 watt hours per kilogram, and that looks right. So the last thing that remains to do is size our horizontal and our vertical stabilizers. Now, the values in these two tables will not affect the range or endurance calculations. 
but it will help us once we actually go to design the aircraft in mock-up. So the horizontal tail volume ratio, you can see the margins, it should be between 0.3 and 0.6. We'll leave it at 0.4 right now. For a lever arm, I like to start with something that's a little bit less than the wingspan. So maybe I'll point it, put it at a 0.65. Actually, we'll put it at a 0.7. Aspect ratio of maybe 6, tape ratio of maybe 0.6 or 0.7, and there we have those uh, fields automatically populated. Now let's come back down here and look at the uh, vertical. I'll maybe point this, uh, put this at 0 0.03. Lever arm of slightly more than the, uh, or slightly less than the horizontal, and I'll tell you why once we build the aircraft. And then a semi span of maybe about the semi span or a little less than the semi span of the horizontal. So this is at 0.18. So let's put 0.17. Tape ratio of 0.5. And we've got those values. So this is just gives us a good starter place for when we build this uh, aircraft to mock up. I think that concludes the this video for designing the aircraft. We've met all of our requirements for the range and the packability and the stall speeds. And so what, what remains is to build it in mock-up, get a spatial idea of if we can fit the battery in there, if we can fit the payload in there, and start to actually design the uh, main wing. So join us in the next video and we'll, we'll finish this design process.